hundreds of times. Andy, can you just describe from your side what what didn't feel right in the court today? Um, well, I felt like there was two things. One, I created loads of chances on the return and didn't break serve enough and uh, I didn't serve well. Um, obviously started every single set. I think I got broken at the beginning of every set. Um, so could never sort of get any scoreboard pressure really. Um, and then, yeah, the times when I did sort of get back into the sets or break back, um, yeah, just I just didn't play well enough, um, didn't serve well enough. And like I said, when I created the, the chances and uh, the return games, there was felt to me there was I, I don't know like lots of like love thirties, fifteen forties, break points, and um, yeah, just couldn't couldn't get any momentum. Simon. Uh, Simon Briggs, Daily Telegraph. I mean, the stats would say that you, you didn't hit as many winners as you normally do. Is, it, is that his defence, or, or do you think you just were not finding that final shot to, to, to finish off a rally? Yeah, I mean, he, he obviously moves very well, and then the way that he plays in terms of, um, you know, obviously it's a lot of slice backhands. It's not always, you know, easy to... to f to finish points, um, you know, off that shot. But obviously, the the goal when someone slices to put them under pressure. You know, you can find areas of the court to force more errors rather than hitting winners off off those balls. Um, so that's probably one reason for it. And then, yeah, the second is if you don't serve that that well. Um, you don't get as many chances on the third ball of the rally to, you know, to hit winners and finish points or hit and come to the net, which is, you know, for me is usually when I would, I would tend to move forward more earlier in the points, um, you know, behind my serve, and yeah, wasn't wasn't getting many free points there. Um, yeah, serve wasn't wasn't big enough and not enough in in the court. Mike. Dixon Mail, um, and it's obviously pretty amazing in some ways that you're out there at all playing at this point. And I'm just wondering, you've had so many great moments out on that court, does that make a sort of match like today all the more painful? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously disappointing. Um, yeah, then, yeah, to not, not play how, how you would like, um, you know, but maybe you know, I need to need to accept that. You know those these events, like the deep runs and everything that I felt like I'm capable of, they might not be there um, as well. So, you know, I'm aware of what I'm doing is it's unbelievably challenging to play at the highest level uh, as I am now. But um, and yeah, some some days it's it's harder than others, but. Yeah, today's obviously a, a really disappointing uh, defeat, and probably the manner of it as well as you know. I mean, I I, I I fought hard enough, but yeah, just didn't like I say, didn't play well enough, and you know, ultimately these these are the events that you want to to play your best tennis in, and um, you know, create more <clears throat> great moments, and didn't didn't do that this year. Yeah, Neil McClemmon from the Mirror. You're at Wimbledon, you're obviously frustrated and disappointed with the manner at the exit, exit there because you're playing so well. Does this, in a way, feel worse today? Um, no, not really. Um, I think when you don't play well, like, yeah, then, yeah, that, I mean, it's obviously it's, it's frustrating, but it's it's not. Um, you know, it can happen, and you know the the highest level. If you don't play to a high enough, you know, high enough level, it's it's very hard to to win. Whereas at Wimbledon, obviously, when you're you know playing at a good level, and you know potentially had a you know a good draw there and everything, um, you know that's um, yeah that's tougher to take. Um, you know, obviously, that like at Wimbledon, I almost had. Queens didn't go well, but had a great build-up in terms of all the matches and everything going into it. 
here was slightly different um and yeah didn't didn't perform didn't perform well a couple more questions Stuart Miller from the New York Times um you mentioned that you know you need, might need to accept that the deeper runs may not be there but you obviously had some good deep runs in smaller tournaments this year what is it that keeps you motivated both at the smaller tournaments and at these tournaments where you know it might be trickier you know I mean obviously you've accomplished so much already in your career so what is it that keeps you grinding away well, yeah, I mean, I've obviously, you know, been progressing this year from a ranking perspective. Um, you know, I had some, some great matches in Australia, um, well, quite a few amazing matches at the beginning of the year, really, in Doha as well. Um, yeah, it was, I think, close to, you know, you never know what's going to happen, but I think I was close to having a good run at Wimbledon. Um and yeah, like I, I, I still, still enjoy um, everything that goes into the, you know, playing at, at a high level. I enjoy, you know, the work and, you know, the, the, the training and trying to improve and trying to get better. Um, I do still enjoy that. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what keeps me keeps me going if if things change and I stop enjoying that or my results my ranking and everything like if I start to go backwards in that respect um you know if in a few months time I was you know ranked 60 in the world or whatever instead of moving moving up the way things might change okay last two Simon and Simon Simon Campus Glasgow Herald Andy what are your plans for the next uh, couple of months of tournament wise uh, well, I was going to play a lot over in Asia. Um, I didn't actually get into the Beijing tournament. Um, it was like ridiculously strong. I think the cutoff was like 23 or something, um, which I've never seen before. Um, so I didn't get into Beijing. Um, so yeah, don't don't know don't know about that. Obviously, the plan was to play Davis Cup, but if I'm being honest, I mean. You know the other guys deserve to play ahead of me, um, and yeah, I know it's obviously probably d difficult um, situation. Like obviously for Leon with with Jack, um, he's had quite a few injuries <clears throat> coming in, but you know if he's fit and healthy, he's obviously playing playing very well. Um, you know Cam and Evo, <clears throat> you know Evo had a great run in Washington, so. Um, yeah, we'll see see about Davis Cup and, and what happens there. But um, yeah, I think there's probably a chance that, that I'm not on the team. Um, and then yeah, see see where I go go from there. I'll try and try and get home this evening or tomorrow morning. And uh, yeah. Last question, Sam. Does this um, kind of stress again? Like how valuable it could be if you just get those extra few places that would put you in the top 32 and and save you from playing a seed. Um, yeah, I mean, it it could do, but also, I mean, I'm going to be in a tough match. You know, if I it's it's more about how how well you play. Like, you know, if if I want to have deep runs in these terms, I'm I'm going to have to come up against players like like Grigor or Sitapas or. You know, whoever in Australia played Berrettini in the first round and, you know, Bautista in the third round, you know, these are obviously top players. Um, obviously, being seeded avoids them early, but, um, yeah, for me, it's it's more about sort of the level that you put out there and the, the performance and um, whether I was seeded or not here in the top 32, then I, I don't think that that guarantees that I'm going to have a... A deep run either but you can see like in the bottom half of the draw just now there is <laughs> there is you know possibilities with you know a lot of the the top guys are you know not having deep runs it is possible that the draws open up a little bit but um yeah wouldn't necessarily matter if you don't play a good enough level